Hi everyone, today I'm working on a 64 gig Lexar from a local customer from uh, Ottawa, Canada and uh, this is what was inside of this case. So I have my uh, DeepSpar USB stabilizer hooked up right here. So the metering device is used to display um, how much amps it's uh, consuming because that information can give us some more input and towards finding out why uh, this unit may not be working. Let me turn the light off and I'm gonna go ahead and power on the device. Power up. It shows it's consuming nothing. Uh, that's interesting. That usually means that the controller is not even active and if the controller is not even active uh, maybe it's not even connected so so let's find out let's zoom in on this thing so we could potentially have a problem with this clock or controller not being attached so um, I know these devices fairly well uh, those two cuts right here in the uh, uh, PCB they're there for a reason they basically retain uh, the PCB in place while it's in the enclosure and when it's in the enclosure um, the way that they designed this board and plastic kind of tabs hold it from here and here but because it's cut in this spot this is uh, the most flexible part on the um, uh, on the whole PCB if we compare it to what uh, SanDisk does We see the send disk has the cuts along the connector line. That's why broken connectors are a notorious failure for any send disk flash drive. But for Lexar, because these cuts are past the connector line, which is right here, it folds and lines up right with the controller. And often what we see, uh, controller has separation between the pads and therefore it stops working. I hardly ever see uh, clocks go bad on these. So there, I, I highly doubt that this is gonna be this unit here. Let's zoom in fully and see if we can maybe spot a problem. And I think I see the problem already. Yeah, let me try to see. Let me show you. Do you see that right there? That looks disconnected to me. And this thing, oh, it's going to an important signal. It's one, one of the data bus signals. Some may argue that simply reflowing this um, center component will be enough uh, to make it work. But um, what if it doesn't? and then you think you have a problem with something else. So instead of guessing, it's always best to be sure um, about uh, your actions and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So in cases like that, I would not just reflow the controller. I would actually pull the controller completely and uh, have it remounted. That will give me more confidence that uh, it's either the issue related to the controller and if it doesn't work it doesn't help us then the problem is has not been related to the controller right from the start let's add some flux the fume extraction is on So luckily for us, things are looking clean.
right, so that's done. Um, I'm just gonna floor it once again. Now that it's got solder on pads, uh, it will kind of recenter itself. So right now I know for sure that the controller is connected. So if it is connected, we should be seeing different uh, numbers in terms of amps that are being drawn. Uh, heat up the connector way too much. So let's have a look what terms what we get for amps. Okay, we're getting proper amps now. We're getting um, 60 50 milliamps coming in that means we're connected mm. although for some reason it says unknown unsupported storage device and it's strange you know why because uh, the quartz I was talking about had shifted let's uh, let's put it back you see or over there I don't know what if I heat it up so much that actually came off the side over here you see this hmm. that's weird I didn't think I heat it up that much um, but it's not a big deal it's easy fix Let's just um, get some flux on there. Sort of heat sink to act as a shield over there. Um, all right, yeah, so turn on the fume extraction once again. Worst comes to worst if, uh, if that component is damaged, we can um, always get another one. Power up. And we got our proper device. Lexar jump drive. 60 gigs. As you remember, that was the device. Here uh, we just need to pretty much clone all of the used space. It's probably FAT32. It is. Uh, used sector map. See it's getting produced up here. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, this is pretty much all that there is um, to it. Uh, the unit is going to perform uh, well throughout the disk imaging process. Uh, and um, this case can be considered a salt. Uh, if you guys have a similar device that needs work, uh, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll help you out. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.